One of the commonly used formats for interchanging data, especially in the web, is something called a JSON. A JSON is a textual representation that we can use to send data from one application to another, typically from a web server back to a web client or from a web server back to some application running locally. That data that is transmitted is sent in a textual format and then is processed in an appropriate fashion so that you can actually do something with it useful. In this video, what I'm going to do is walk through a little bit of dealing with JSONs and using a library called the Simple JSON Library. This library allows us to send these JSON files, uh, encode and decode data, in Java basically using a map type interface, allowing us to put things into the JSON or read JSON objects back out. We're going to be looking at this in terms of Java. I'm going to show you basically a basic schema for how this can be encoded. The schema tells us what data is where and how we can interpret that data and things like that. So let's take a look at what we have. So on screen right now, you're looking at basically a very, very simple schema representing a data object that's got two items in it. This object here is a type and there's a property called name. That name has a type referred to as string. An example string might be Harry Truman. The string basically can be any number of characters and that's essentially defining what we have. So this pattern here is essentially a regular expression representation of the data that we can have. And it can follow any and all regular expression types. Age here, the type is an integer, and we can see that I have an integer right here, a value of 72, for example. So if we think about this, what we would have in here is essentially a class, for example, that might be called a person with a name that has a value of Harry Truman in it and an int that happens to have a value of 72. That's what's going to be inside of our JSON schema. We can now use basically a JSON parser, this simple JSON library here, to communicate this information back and forth. So, for example, in this particular case here, I have a main that declares an instance of a person with the name being Harry Truman and the age being 72. This person class here in the constructor, we see, populates the name and the age with the appropriate values. There is a typo in right there. So the person's name gets set, the person's age gets set when the constructor instantiates a new instance of the object. Now, as we go a little bit farther, I have a method in here, print it, not necessarily the greatest or more advanced name, but what it does is it prints the information out to the console, the name and the age of the person. I then have this other method here called obtain JSON string. This obtain JSON string takes and creates a JSON object representing the name. Now you'll notice that this is basically a map type interface in which name in text here is the key representing data and name is actually put into this, just like you would use a hash map or one of those types of data structures. I can also put the age in there as an age. And then what I do is I return this JSON string as a textual string. So this is just going to be a plain old, basically ASCII type text representation for this object. Now in here I also have another method here called create person from JSON string. So create person from JSON string takes a string representation of the data in JSON format and what it returns is a new instance of the person. We do this using a JSON parser class. So the JSON parser, which is part of this simple JSON library that is defined here, JSON simple 1.1.1.jar, 
what it will do is it's going to parse the string that's passed in like so and it's going to create an object from it that we can then get the data back out of from this map interface here I'm getting the name out now I'm doing a cast to get this over into a string and here what I'm doing is I'm getting the age converting it over to an int value in order to place it into the age attribute at which point there I instantiate a new object of a person and return this new person object now in terms of the functionality for this here you'll notice that I've got a little bit of some interesting code going on here the JSON con format for this library what it does is it assumes that all ints are actually longs um, so when I do the get what it's doing is returning to me a long object I can then take that long object and get back out of it an integer value that I can then put into the age area. That's a little bit of something that is unique to each one of the libraries that works with JSONs um, because the raw data is actually just going to be going across as an integer type value. Main here what I do is I instantiate Harry Truman like so. I'm going to print it out to the console so you can actually see the information inside of this person. Then I'm going to take this person that I've instantiated here and get the JSON string. This is the ASCII string that you would see transmitted across the system or across basically the web if you were looking at each byte as it goes across if you're communicating from a server back say for example to a uh, web system. I print that out to the console and then from that string what I do is I call this to create a new person and I'm going to print it out indicating that I have a match. So when all is said and done, new P should have the same content as P, and we've essentially communicated between these two classes, or two instances of classes, excuse me, using essentially this JSON string format. So you can think of this JSON string as basically being a serialized m representation of the data that's inside of the class. Okay, so I have this. Let's take a look at what happens when I run this. So as the code compiles here, what we will find is it's building away. And when it's done building, what we will see is the output going out to the console, showing the communications and showing essentially this code behaving and running the way we want it to. So we see here, for example, that when I call this printed here, the name is Harry Truman the age of 72, which is what we instantiate into the object here. This right here is a textual representation in JSON format for the object that's being sent across. If I go back to my schema here for it, make this a little bit smaller here, we can see that the first property of the object here is name, and we have Harry Truman as a string age is our second property here and the age is 72. Now notice that Harry Truman is in quotation marks because it is a string 72 is not because it is a simple integer. Now from this data this JSON string that was sent across that I printed out to the console right here what I can do here is create a new instance of an object and you see here that I have Harry Truman age 72 which is exactly what I had up here. So, this is the simple JSON library at work, and you can see various classes here as I expand them out. We have the parser, for example, that is used to parse the information, and we have a JSON object, for example, that is a class within the system here. We can use these and we can do a lot of different things with sending JSONs. For example, I can have a JSON array that actually has multiple JSON data items placed inside of it. You can use those things, and there is documentation available on this library that will explain how to do some of those things. So at this point, what you've seen is a little bit of background about how to interpret a JSON schema, how to use this particular library to generate a JSON from a class, and in this case, I'm serializing it by basically printing it out to the console and creating a new 
class, but you could also very easily imagine how this code right here, instead of printing it out to the console, would actually send it across the network. So with that being said, I'm going to bring this video here to a close, working with JSONs and JSON schemas.